Today, we're going to look at Capture One versus Lightroom. Now, if you follow me, you've probably seen some of my other Lightroom Capture One reviews, including my kind of deep dive, and I will link that. But this video isn't about so much which one's better, but to show you the ins and outs of each when it comes to developing a photo. Today's is going to be a portrait. We're just going to take one photo, and I'm going to edit them more or less the same way, the same way I would edit in real life using presets and styles, as well as manual corrections, kind of showing you the interface and giving you some tips along the way. Both of these are great. Here is this photo. I'm going to shift control R to reset it completely. Okay, let me get rid of me. So here's this nice photo of Ivana, a little bit wide. We're going to crop it a little bit, but first I want to show you in Capture One. I'm going to switch over. This is the exact same photo, control R to reset in this case. And you can see that we have all our settings at zero here in Capture One. Now you'll notice if I switch back and forth, there's an inherent difference. The Lightroom version processes a little more greeny yellow and the Capture One version is a little more red. Now this particular file is a Fuji file. But one thing I've noticed, and frankly, as someone who uses both because I'm developing workshops and presets and tools and stuff, it can be frustrating sometimes that they're different in terms of their base color. Because remember, these are both raw files. The way they fundamentally interpret the file is different. And that doesn't mean if you're using one or the other, it's going to make a distinct difference in your editing. But as someone like me who switches back and forth a lot, I notice that. Let's go to Lightroom first. I'm going to go to this photo, and the first thing I'm going to do is press R. I'm going to press R, go to the R key, and let's just crop it up a little from the bottom. Not too much from the top because I like kind of this overarching tree, but I just want to take some of that bottom space off. There we go. Now we have a nice full length, great detail, and looks good. The first thing I would do with this, just like in all editing sessions, is apply a preset. If someone tells you, oh, real pros don't use presets, then they're probably not one because as a professional who's doing sessions, who's doing weddings, who's trying to be efficient, the first thing I want to do is edit as efficiently as possible. The ability to go down and say, hey, I'm going to take the Portra 160 look and put it on Ivana here. I mean, there's absolutely no reason why I would try and manually do that because I know that Portra 160 look. It's soft, golden evening sun, but there's still that kind of that sun in the face look. So I want something that's not a super intense process. A lot of presets would give you something that looked like this. So I just know that if I go to a nice classic film process like Portra 160, it's going to work. And by the way, this Portra 160, you can actually download for free. There's other portraits. There's the Portra 400 and stuff in the, in the film is complete. But if you just want to play with this, it's a great preset and it's free. I will link that also in the video information. Now I'm going to say, let's tweak it a little bit. And what I want to do as we go along here is look at real world tools. Let's tweak manually. Let's go to shadow and highlights. Here's our develop sliders. These are very similar between Lightroom and Capture One, which we'll get to in a minute. I could control the highlights and say, well, if I drag them down too much, her face goes a little flat, right? So I want to keep some pop in her face. I'm going to pull the blacks down a little bit, looking up at my histogram, using my tonal range well, right? I'm all the way down there in that kind of zone one, zone zero side of the tonal range and all the way up here to about zone seven or eight. So I'm looking pretty good. Now I could do a vignette here, but in Lightroom right now, in the latest uh, 2022 version that we're in, you can do the masks so well. I could go to elegant speed masks, and that's normally how I would edit, is probably go here and run something like the portrait AI combo. Just for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna do it manually. So I'm gonna click the masks, and I'm gonna select, select a select subject mask. Rather than do a vignette, I'm going to do it this way. It's going to do detecting subject AI. Now, if I applied this as a preset, it would apply all the settings as a preset, and then I would update the mask. Okay, it selected my subject, and she looks pretty good. But what I'm going to do is go up here, click the three dots, and duplicate this. Okay, so now I have mask one. Let's rename that real quick to back, just so we know the difference between the two. And now I'm going to click on the mask and click the selection inside it. Click the three dots and click invert. Okay, so now this mask is affecting the background and I can tone down my background just a little bit. I could say, hey, let's turn down texture and clarity, kind of make it nice and soft in the background and just make it really golden and beautiful. Then our other mask, which is our subject, she looks pretty good, but I might turn the, the texture controls down and adjust it around just a little bit. Uh, maybe do a little bit of whites on her face. You get the idea. But rather than use a vignette, which would work fine, by the way, I use vignettes a lot. 
the, the Lightroom masks here look really good. So for example, I could turn my saturation. I'm not trying to do selective color. Don't click off yet because I'm, I'm not taking you there. You always wanna separate your subject from the background. So I'm just gonna turn the saturation, the clarity, et cetera, down just a little bit. Now, I could have done that in here quicker with the speed masks in Elegance 4, but I just wanna make sure that I'm showing you guys how to actually edit these things, how quick it is to just go and tinker with masks. Then you can select any of these masks and, and adjust their settings, whether you apply those masks manually like I just did or with a preset. Okay, so let's look at where we started, which was here, and here, is our edit. We did really good. I don't really need to play with the color anymore, but just so we're clear, if I wanted to play with the color, if it was a little bit off, I would start with just tweaking just a little bit. I could go a little warmer or cooler here with white balance. Maybe it looks a little better, cooler. So let's play with our white balance just a little bit. And if I wanted to get more advanced, I could of course go down to my HSL, which is mostly done for me here because of the portrait preset I apply, but I could certainly dial back reds or oranges or something like that. Let's go straight over now to Capture One and edit this exact same photo. And I'm gonna take more or less the same process, start by doing the same preset. So I'm actually gonna go to here and go to the Portra 160 preset, all right? And it's giving us a very similar look on the Portra 160. Now I could tweak with my white balance a little bit and say, hey, let's cool it down a little bit. Let's play with our saturation a little bit, bring a little more of the orange into her, right? So I could tweak around with it just a little bit. I'm here in Capture One and you can see most of our sliders here are the same. So if you're thinking, hey, can I do the same things? Yes, in Capture One, you have more nuances in color, right? So we have more specifics in terms of, rather than just the sliders that we have down here in Lightroom for luminance, saturation, and hue, we can actually go and select any color. So there's our defaults, but we can actually custom select any color we want and then color correct that color. There's also skin tone settings for portraits, things like that, that we can be more skin tone specific. In the end though, and I wanna just be clear about this, whatever you're using, you're gonna be able to get a great result. In the end, for a lot of people, I think all these advanced color tools do give you more control, but they also make it easier to screw things up. When I'm having to develop presets that are the same, like this portrait preset, in, in Capture One versus in Lightroom. Dialing it in in Capture One is substantially more difficult because you have levels, you have advanced color controls, you have curves. Lightroom is actually more intuitive and I can usually in the end get any result that I could create in Capture One. You see here I have oranges selected in the advanced color editor, right? Well, I can then define by dragging in the color wheel and say, well, what is orange in this context? And I can tell it how, how far I want it to fade out, whether I want it to fade wider or tighter in its feathering. These are controls you don't have in Lightroom, not to mention that we can also go down and we have not only the curves, which we have in Lightroom in red, green, blue, and RGB, but we also have levels that we can control. So these extra level of controls are very useful, but let's see what actually happens in terms of what we get. You can actually go here and click and hold, go to unconstrained, which is normally what I want when I'm cropping, and then I can just bring my crop up. So it's right about the same as our Lightroom crop. So there we go. Um, you'll see if I double click, it doesn't actually leave the crop. I need to go back to the select tool or V, and then it kind of commits that crop and it looks good. Let's compare again between our Lightroom here and our Capture One. Our Lightroom is a little bit redder and that's fine, but we could tweak that a little bit by just controlling the oranges a little bit on this if we wanted it to lean a little more towards the red. You can see the process is a little different just in how it fundamentally makes these, but it is pretty good. Let's go to adjust though and see about separating that background. So we have layers in Capture One. Um, let's actually make a new empty adjustment layer and then we don't have those kind of AI masking tools. So in this case, we're just gonna need to use a, a radial or a brush or something like that. There is the magic brush, kind of like uh, we had in light, have in Lightroom as well that kind of auto selects, but it's not nearly as refined as something you would get with the AI masking in Lightroom. So usually if I'm doing something like this, I'm gonna do a vignette or I can just go and use a brush tool. So let's click here, let's make my brush larger and kind of big and soft, right? And then let's kind of go around here and just brush around her to kind of separate her from the background. You can see nothing's happening because I haven't applied any settings to this layer. Now, if I come in here 
And let's just say I dial down my exposure, my saturation just a little bit, and maybe my brightness, just kind of tone things down a little on the background, nothing too intense. <clears throat> I can then come in here. I can also alt click and drag to control my brush size, similar to like I would do in Lightroom. So I can kind of paint around these areas here, mask around here. This is working fine in this case because I don't need a super detailed mask just to tone down the light. And so you can see here that if I, if I turn this up or down, I have selected her pretty well, even though it's not specific. Let's just dial that down just a little bit. And I think that's pretty good right there and go back to our background layer, which is our master layer. And I think overall it's looking good. I actually wanna go, let's actually turn our clarity down a little bit here. And I'm gonna turn our overall exposure up just a teeny tiny bit and maybe pull our highlight down just a touch. Okay, so I think we're pretty good on this edit. It looks good to be right here the way it is. And you can see if I just scroll, I can zoom in. We have a nice grain from our Portrait 160 look. Our light overall is good. I could pull down my white balance a little bit to kind of throw a little less warmth on it. And let's compare the two. You can see we have an edit between these two now that is very similar. Here's our Lightroom version. And here is our Capture One edit. Lightroom version and our Capture One edit. You've probably heard people say, oh, but Capture One's better for details or things like that. It's wormy, especially if you shoot a Fuji camera, there's worms in Lightroom. That's really not the case in 2022. And I demonstrated that I think pretty well in my video where I compared worms and details in Lightroom versus Capture One that is also here on the channel and you can check it out. But let's just take a look at this. This happens to be actually from a Fuji file and let's actually look at our details. So here we are in our Lightroom version of the edit and let's zoom in very far. Let's put it at uh, like 300% here just so you can see it on the screen. Really zoomed in, but you can see that our detail is actually holding up pretty good. No extreme sharpness. I didn't really do any sharpness edits. I did put a little bit of grain. I highly recommend on most images, regardless of that, their ISO, a little bit of grain, especially on those filmic looks, because it's really just gonna kind of help that organic feel. And also it kind of helps wash away some of that digital artifactiness that we get. If you turn the grain off, you can see that zoomed in this close, there's a little bit, but we're to the point where we're seeing pixels here really. Our sharpening here is at 40, which is the default, and there's no noise reduction. So if we turned on noise reduction, we could screamy that up a little bit, but we are gonna start losing some of the detail and the fine detail in the hair and things like that. Let's go back to the Capture One version and just zoom in a bunch on that as well. And you can see here that our details are about the same. Let's turn off our grain on this as well down to zero, just so we can kind of see the native. Now, you might think at a glance, and I talked about this in the detail video, oh, there's there's actually less artifactiness. But you gotta remember that in on, on this file, it's putting 50% noise reduction by default in Capture One, whereas it was zero. If I turn the noise reduction down on this, we would bring back some of those artifacts. So the sliders are not always one-to-one, -one, even though the developing is very similar in these two. And here's our Capture One. Let's turn our grain back on a little bit, not too much, just a little bit, and go back here into Lightroom and turn our grain back on as well, just a little. And you can see that they're actually very similar. I would say the Lightroom version might be a little sharper by default, although uh, we could certainly turn up the default sharpening a little more on the Capture One version. So which one do you like the best? Because of the more advanced masking tools, I was able to get exactly what I wanted quicker. Layers in Capture One are becoming a little bit dated and it's erroneous when people think, oh, Capture One has layers, Lightroom doesn't. If I use Capture One, I know I won't need Photoshop. The level of layer editing you can do in Capture One is not even a comparable thing to Photoshop. Photoshop, you can do advanced pixel level edits. And that's why if I'm doing more advanced things, I go to Photoshop. I use things like Loomis and Alchemist Actions. I use Blackroom. I can do advanced burning and dodging. You won't replace a pixel editor like Photoshop or Affinity even with Capture One, even though you probably will be able to do 90% of your edits. Layers in Capture One are very useful, but masks in Lightroom more or less do the same thing, although there are a few more settings available in the Capture One. But as you can see in practice, in this particular photo, we both edited them about the same. 
It took a little longer in Capture One because the masking was more manual or the layers as we call them in Capture One, but I'm also faster in Lightroom because I use it more. Regardless, whichever of these you use, I just kind of wanted to give you a fundamental idea of how I would edit a portrait in Lightroom versus Capture One. I hope you found this useful. Give me a comment, a shout out. Let me know if you found this kind of thing to be useful. And if you want to see more side-by-sides of Lightroom versus Capture One, whatever you decide to use, I'm sure you're going to get great results. And we'll see you in the next one, Tribe. Peace out.